Hey everybody, I wanted to take some time today to try out a video with me filming at the board to see how the webcam on the computer did with that. But really what I want to focus on today is talking about the language of experiments. As we dive into these experiments, we're going to have a set of terminology and we want to make sure that we're all on board with that. Rather than me spending the time writing out a definition and you copying it down in your notes and things like that, what I wanted to do is use the context of the Michael Norton TED Talk about money and happiness to show you an example of what this might look like and explain the concepts there. So if you want to rewatch the video, that's not a bad idea. This uh, description is mostly at the beginning here, but I'll try to describe it again and we'll work through it like that. So what they did was they went to the University of British Columbia and they got a whole bunch of people together and they were going to give them some money and tell them how to spend it. Now, the idea is that if you were reading a research paper about this, you'd see all of this detail. Now he's giving a TED talk, he's not going to go into all the boring details. But we're going to break this down. So the first thing that they had to do was find subjects. Uh, we call them subjects. If they're not humans, we call them experimental units. Uh, a little bit more inanimate uh, with people we like to go with that subjects word. So we're going to start with subjects here. And he didn't tell us in the video how many people they talked to, but we know that it was people on the campus of the University of British Columbia. And that's important. This is not all people. This is not even all college students. And this is not everybody in British Columbia or everybody in Canada. It's very specific, specifically a group of people found on that campus. It's not random. We'll talk about what it means to have subjects that weren't chosen randomly. And that's okay. We just want to talk about the implications for that later on in the study. So once they found these people, they decided, what are we going to do to them? How are we going to experiment on them? And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but that's what we're doing in experiments. We're taking these people, we're having them do something and, and seeing what happens. So what they're going to do to them, uh, we give some names. We either call it the factors. Or sometimes you'll see this as the explanatory variable. What is the variable? What is the thing that we're going to change that's going to impact what's happening at the end? Okay, so I'm going to bring that up here. You know, the explanatory variable. Okay. And really, in this way, there are two. Okay. There was the amount of money spent and there was how they spent it. Okay. I'm going to apologize, I'm getting a little sloppy with the handwriting here, but hopefully it still makes sense. Now the cool thing within this is it's a variable, so there are different levels of that. Within the amount of money spent, it was either $5 or $20. And within how they spent it, it was on yourself or on others. And so each of our two factors has two levels. Some experiments will see more, some will have less. Okay. What that gives us, though, in the end, is four treatment groups. And the reason it's four is that I have two factors, two levels, two times two is four. So I have one treatment group that is going to spend $5 on yourself. I have one treatment group that is going to spend $5 on others. I have one treatment group that is going to spend $20 on yourself. And I have one treatment group that is going to spend $20 on others. And that's important to understand. When we take these subjects, we've got to split them into four different groups. Make sure each group is hitting on a different level of a different factor. 
at the end of the day, they're going to call these people up, and what they're going to be looking for, I'm going to come over here a little bit, is this response variable. At the end of the day, all of this is to ask them the question, how happy did it make you? And talk about how they're measuring that, whether that was a scale or a subjective thing. Okay. But we've got a little bit of an insight into what they're looking for. So I hope that helps explain some things. We'll talk about this with more examples, but we're going to want to make sure we can break all this down, and we're going to make sure that when we're planning out our experiments, that we're taking these things all into consideration. So who's involved in the experiment? What are they all doing? What groups do we need to have? And what are we measuring at the end? Right? So we'll spend some time taking a look at that, and we'll come back to class and we'll see you all later. Have a great day.